up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're here in a new undisclosed location because guess what? We have a totally new vehicle from Volkswagen. This is it. This is the 2022 VW. This one is the Taos. But before we get into this small size SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Volkswagen. It's been around since the 1930s. So many iconic cars from the Volkswagen Beetle and Bug to, of course, the Golf. Now, we're not going to be getting a Mark 8 standard Golf here in the United States. We will be getting the new GTI and we will be getting the new Golf R. So what Volkswagen decided to do is bring yet another SUV to their lineup that really is going to kind of bridge the gap from the absence of the regular standard Golf and of course the Volkswagen Tiguan and that's where the Taos comes into play. This is technically a subcompact SUV. So when you think subcompact, you should be thinking Kia Seltos, Chevrolet Trailblazer, Mazda CX-30, Toyota CHR, Honda HRV, so on and so forth. Now, this being a subcompact, definitely is small in size, but this really is kind of getting to this gray area between subcompact and compact with its size and of course the features. But what I wanna find out is we have the top SEL trim. This is all new 2022 Taos. I wanna find out, let's look at a very, very popular subcompact, the Mazda CX-30. Is the Taos the better option for your hard-earned money when you're looking for a smaller SUV than compared to the Mazda CX-30? Let's go ahead, let's find out what this Taos brings to the table and do they have enough for the competition. Let's go ahead and dive in. Right off the bat, the styling. As soon as you see it, you know it's a Volkswagen. Starting at the front of the business, they did a great job with making it very, very sporty and very unique. So you're gonna get LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps. And the way that they do their daytime running lamps over at Volkswagen is spot on the money. Look at how it's gonna flow right into the front grill, which carries more of that lighting and then also on the interior, just a little bit of chrome trim, everything else blacked out. And it really, like I said, when you look at the Tiguan, when you look at the bigger Atlas, they did a great job with styling. Now in this lower corner area, you do have these very, very large, aggressive side air curtains. So we have some gloss black, body color match, but then you're gonna get some flat black and that functionality that's gonna flow air right down the side of the vehicle. As we work our way down, this is where we get a little bit into a fake vent style. They kind of took the design of the grill and brought it into this lower area and then carried across. I wish they would have just kept this smooth or maybe drop in an LED fog lamp into this lower area and then smooth out the rest of it. I think that would have really just helped clean up the whole lower portion of the front fascia. Now, as we come across that iconic badge, that Volkswagen badge, the people's car, you do have the horizontal chrome bar up top, down below with that lighting. There's that Volkswagen badge. And then there's that design that they were simulating in that lower section from the upper grill. Working your way down, there is a very large, massive area of gloss black. And I am gonna be curious to see how this does age over time. But sitting here brand new, model year 2022, especially with the bright, blueberry blue that we have on this thing. It really stands out nicely. Some more flat black functionality on the lower section and this flat silver kind of brings just that little extra something to drag your attention to that aggressive look. Now, comparing this to the CX-30, definitely a little bit more rugged look. I think the CX-30 looks a little bit more sporty, but definitely when you're comparing it to the other subcompact crossovers, it really has a unique identity. Now, when you get up onto that hood, Simple German styling. We're gonna have a nice body line on each side there. Everything kind of curves towards the A pillar, but this hood, it looks like an Atlas, just kind of shrunk down like somebody washed it on hot water and then put it in the dryer and kind of shrunk it down to give it that nice style. Now, when we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? So on the SEL trim, this being the top trim, you are gonna get these absolutely mind-blowing, gorgeous wheels. It's an 18 inch wheel machine aluminum with the gloss black. I like that Y design that goes all the way. It's almost, a, what am I saying, Y? That V, V for VW, all the way around. 
and then you can see that they brought the flat black. Now, we're comparing this to the CX-30, that's where I feel like the CX-30 styling-wise gets a little wonky, or I should say zonky. It's because they take that body molding up a little too high on this Taos. I think they did it just about right. If you're going to have black, flat black molding on the side, that's about as high as I'd want to go. Nice, strong body line, especially on the fender. There's just something about the unique German styling that flows very nicely. Now, one of the things that Volkswagen does really well is they put these side fender badges without looking too gaudy. A little bit of chrome trim, the Taos name, and look at how they just carry it in long enough into the front door. You're going to get color matched on the mirror caps, and then we're going to have these nice bright silver, almost looks like a polished silver, raised roof rails, and we have a full panoramic sunroof. Down below, we do have the flat black coming around the fender and running along the bottom portion of the vehicle. It is nice the way they brought some body style, some body lines into this lower area and just keeping it, instead of just keeping it smooth. Bright, shiny metalwork only on the bottom of the window openings, which I think was very smart. Of course, we have color matched on the door handles. Working our way, nice flat roof design. I think the raised roof rails kind of give it that little bit more rugged look. Plus, if you're gonna use this for any kind of adventuring, it's easier to get those tie downs kind of all hooked up. Good size on the quarter window. There's that bright, shiny metal work just kind of peaks up and then comes to a nice point. And then as we come around back, just like the headlights, Volkswagen does a great job on their LED taillights. We have all wheel drive for motion. That's what that means. All wheel drive with the Taos name, Volkswagen badge. There's just something about the rear wiper. Get it tucked underneath here because they give you a nice long roof spoiler extension, you can make that disappear and just clean up the whole back of the vehicle. But as we drop down, you do have your SEL badge. We are gonna have to do a big zonk though. Fake exhaust openings on each side. I don't know why they do that. Just get rid of that, keep it smooth. We know they're not exhaust. And then also that fake design from the front they brought to the rear. Everything else is super clean as it kind of wraps underneath the back of the vehicle. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering our towel. Right, guys, we got the hood popped. It does have a prop rod. I'm not gonna zonk it because pretty much all the competition has the same prop rod. Now, underneath that hood is gonna be something a little bit different from Volkswagen. You're not gonna find a two liter. It's actually a 1.5 liter inline four turbocharged engine, 158 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a seven-speed DCT transmission. Remember, that's that dual-clutch transmi uh, transmission. Zero to 60 with our all-wheel drive is around 7.8 seconds. Quarter mile is 16 and a half seconds. Top speed is 120 miles an hour. MPGs, you're looking around 25 in the city, 32 on the highway. Now, if we're comparing this to the Mazda CX-30, the standard engine in a Mazda CX-30 is a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter inline four that gives you around 186 horsepower, but you can also go turbocharged with the Mazda CX-30, which I highly recommend. That's going to give you believe it or not, 250 horsepower. So from a performance standpoint, the CX-30 is definitely, when it comes to numbers, the way to go. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see what big things are in store in this smaller sized Volkswagen. All right, guys, we're inside the 2022 Volkswagen Taos. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've been looking for a smaller SUV. I live in the city. I don't need anything big but I definitely want to maximize my space and I definitely want to maximize the technology inside the vehicle. Liking the look of this Volkswagen Taos, how much is it? Well, remember, this is an SEL trim and you got those 19 inch wheels. Wait until you see what you have in here. If you're wondering what's the MSRP, it's $35,440. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. They did a bang up job on style. Love the soft touch material up top. You got that metallic gray finish, which is not gonna show the fingerprints as bad as regular gloss black. And then you have that lighter gray with the white contrast stitching, semi hard on the armrest, flat black everywhere else. If you're comparing this to the CX-30, I think the CX-30 brings an extra style of luxury 
to the door panel, but if you're comparing this to say the Hyundai Kona, this blows it out of the water. Large door pocket down there for a oversized Annie Ann's pretzel. Get the cinnamon and sugar one, you deserve it, and a bottle of Yoohoo to wash it down. Now, when you're going from the door panel to the dash, you are gonna be getting the Beats sound system. Technically, they're not called Beats by Dr. Dre, but I'm calling them Dr. Dre Beats. Full audio sound system that is optional on the SEL. There's more of that gloss metallic gray finish. Like I said, it doesn't show the fingerprints as bad as standard gloss black. Love the way they brought that light gray in with the stitching all the way across. And then look what we got in the center. Uh, official Volkswagen branded Twinkie tray. So you'll be able to get five Twinkies up there, let them get nice and warm in the sun, and then you could have that little piece of gold brown and delicious. Now working your way down, the SEL trim has the optional eight inch infotainment system. Standard is six and a half, so eight inch infotainment system, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, navigation, touchscreen capability, very easy to use. This is where it's a little smaller than the CX-30. The CX-30 has an 8.8 .8 inch system, but this has the touchscreen capability that many of you love and many of you want your vehicle to have. There's your AC controls, very intuitive. You could go into your car settings, get all the different information that you need, go into an off-road screen configuration because this does have that four motion all-wheel drive nice touches like that and the graphics the fonts everything is super clear work in your oh backup camera almost forgot throw it in the reverse super clear on the resolution they did a bang up job i think it's even more clear than the mazda cx30 and if you're comparing this to the seltos or the kona or the trailblazer also very very clear now working your way down you got your ac vents we got dual climate control heated seats and ventilated seats Thank you, Volkswagen. A little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. You're gonna have wireless charging, two USB-Cs, and a 12 volt. Just make sure you don't stick your Twinkie in there. This is gonna control that seven speed DSG. That's a dual clutch transmission. I do like the silver start stop button, a little bit more of that metallic gray finish. And then you do have some dead buttons here. Four dead buttons, which I'm not, actually five, I'm not sure why on the top SEL trim. So we are gonna zonk all those dead buttons. You have your mode selector switch, easy to go through. And if you look on the infotainment side of things, you actually get these great graphics. So we could go into off-road mode, very easy to do and all changeable on the fly. Look at that, look at that snow. I'm starting to get cold in here, even though it's 90 degrees. But working our way back, you do have two cup holders. I like the way they went flat black here. Keep that part simple. We have the auxiliary Twinkie tray holder there. Here's your key fob. Nothing really to write home about, but it does have the Volkswagen logo, remote start, which is a nice touch. And you could pop the hatch from the back. On the side, they give you a Twinkie cargo net, just in case for those moments when you get a little hangry. I like the material and the stitching on the armrest. Lift it up, whoa. Enough room for a five pound bag of Sour Patch Kids. That shows the versatility of this subcompact. And then the seats, I love the soft material, the leather work, and the way they did the two-tone, I'm telling you, it elevates the feel. Manual seat controls for the passenger, but guess what? I have electric adjustment for the driver's side, and we have that nice, large panoramic sunroof that goes all the way back. It's touches like that that are gonna help you separate from the rest of the crowd in this segment. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind this beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel in our Taos. All right, guys, we're inside the business end, that driver's side of the Taos. It's really tasteful how they have this beautiful aluminum sill panel with the Taos name there to welcome you, remind you what vehicle you bought in case you forgot. You got 10-way adjustable seat for the driver. That lower lumbar, you could actually make it mid lumbar, which is a nice extra touch. I'm six feet tall, plenty of room in this subcompact. It's actually wider than the Tiguan, and the Tiguan is a compact SUV. <sighs> Steering wheel, a thing of beauty. Love the white contrast stitching, flat bottom. They do a great job on the horn button with the Volkswagen logo, 
flat silver, flat black, just a little bit of gloss black. It is manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And the great news is you get 10 inches, 10 inches of digital gauge display. Love the colors, the graphics, the fonts, lots of information, easy to get to. That makes driving this vehicle such a breeze. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the back seat and see how your passengers are gonna enjoy this house. All right guys, passenger time in this subcompact. And just like up front, it blows the Mazda CX-30 out of the water with the amount of room. I think the only subcompact that could come close to this is the Kia Seltos. Really incredible what they're doing. Let's look at what you have back here. So you're gonna get that leather style material all the way around. Nice large pocket. You could easily put, I would say, two cookie cakes back there. You do have rear AC, which is wonderful. A nice little tray for a couple circus peanuts. And then you do have one USB-C for the fast charging. I got plenty of leg room over here. It is quite incredible, especially with the flat roof, just how much room you have. And then you can pull down this bad boy and they give you plenty of armrests. You know, sometimes the way they put these cup holders, it could take away the actual place for your arm to rest. Remember, dial 6781 on your cell phone to report any manufacturer to the armrest police if they don't give you enough armrest room. But the good news is Volkswagen is in the clear. Plenty of room. Plus, look at this. You actually have a pass-through. Hey! So you could have that cooler back there with the snacks, the Doritos, the Lay's, the Ruffles. Have some French onion dip. You can use this as a table. Mm. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in that cargo area and see just how much space is in this smaller Taos. All right, guys, time to get in the cargo area. You're gonna hit the button right under the Volkswagen badge. It is an electric assist. You're gonna have to lift it up yourself. And the great news is, even with the four motion all wheel drive, you're gonna get a ton of space. So with the seats up, 27.9 cubic feet of space. Fold those seats down, you're looking around 69 cubic feet of space. I think it's so smart the way the cargo floor is low because that really maximizes your height. Great amount of width. You got nooks over here for a bag of Lay's, for a bag of Doritos, and there's a 12 volt in the back. So you could do your beach day, you could do your tailgating, and then of course, to put the seats down, it's easy peasy. You're just gonna go ahead and push on the lever. You got a nice little pass through there in the center for when you're sitting inside the vehicle and need to get to the snacks. Look at that, nicely done, maximize the space. And then on top of that, wait for it, there is a spare tire as well. So nice to see that they got you covered from every angle, but if you're ready, I'm definitely ready. Let's take this Taos for a little spin. All right, guys, we're in the 2022 Volkswagen Taos SEL trim. Remember, you can start with the S or work your way all the way up to the SEL trim. Right away, such a very spacious driving experience compared to all those other subcompact SUVs. I love the blue on this particular Taos, that cornflower blue, and just everything is so well laid out in here. Getting to the infotainment system is well within reach. You got that nice large digital gauge cluster, easy to read. You could bring up your uh, Sirius XM station, just about really any information that you want in that center display can go through the different channels, but makes it very easy to kind of personalize to whatever driving information that you want. You're gonna get all the safety features, lane keep assist, you know, your blind spot monitoring. And then it's so ironic how when you look out over the hood, it looks, like I said, from the outside, it looks like a miniature Atlas hood from the inside it does as well. Visibility out the back is great. Side mirrors are awesome. I like the nice balance steering that there is. And these seats not only look good, but they're also very, very comfortable. Now, the great news is for those who need the all-wheel drive, we have that four motion all-wheel drive system, which is gonna help you get the power to the ground, especially when climate changes and everything that happens with snow and rain and everything else. But let me go ahead and do it on throttle. Nobody's behind us. I'm gonna leave it in drive, let it shift automatically. On throttle, here we go. 
So the dual clutch transmission paired with the turbocharged engine takes a little, there's a little bit of lag there, dropping down and getting going um, from a, a, a dead stop. So just something to be aware. Once you're up and rolling, everything uh, seems to, to kind of click very well together, but I'm not too sure that the DSG was the way to go with this setup. I think the eight speed automatic might have been the better option, but just be aware that there is a little bit of lag between gear shifts uh, and whatnot. And that kind of drags out the zero to 60 time or when you're pulling out in traffic or on the highway. I do like the way you have the ventilated seats and the heated seats and the heated steering wheel plus dual climate control uh, is very nicely done. And this interior does not feel subcompact, not only from the fit and finish, but the materials. And I'm gonna say it once again, the space is very nicely done. All right, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna shift manually with the actual shift lever itself. You do have a gear indicator at the bottom of the tachometer, the digital tachometer, but second gear, on throw, here we go. Push forward on the shifter. So you're getting smooth, fast shifts when you activate that shift lever. It is backwards though, so just something to be aware of the shift pattern, but third gear, second gear. I'm gonna put it back over to automatically drive mode again. But that kind of quickened up the whole experience a little by shifting manually with the shift lever. Engine is a little on the buzzy side, but it is a small displacement inline four turbocharged engine. Let's do another on throttle here from a dead stop. On throttle, here we go. So I'm just gonna keep my foot flat in it. I feel like the Seltos is definitely gonna be quicker and for sure the Mazda CX-30 is gonna be quicker. I think both standard CX-30 and also the turbo uh, with all-wheel drive will be quicker than this. But, like I said, when it comes to space, passenger volume, cargo volume, and a lot of this great technology, you're really getting so much from this 2022 Taos. I wanna see how the car drives the SUV drives on the highway. Another thing to be aware of is a little herky jerkiness with that DCT as you get off throttle a little and then get back on throttle. So just something to be aware about. It's a little different driving experience that maybe what you're used to to a conventional torque converter automatic, but here we go, getting on the highway. So like I said, once you're up to speed, the ride is very compliant, very comfortable. The seats are great. And I think having that ventilated seat option is something that the competition just doesn't really have. The navigation looks great. You got the wireless connectivity, wireless charging. It's one of those small SUVs that uh, I don't think you're gonna have a problem driving long distance and really taking advantage of those maximum MPGs but hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel and understanding about what the 2022 Taos is all about. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another great day here on Rady's Rise with this Volkswagen Taos. I definitely wanna thank Mark and the rest of the crew for getting Rady's Rise access to this press fleet vehicle, the Taos definitely pushing the boundaries of what a subcompact SUV is all about. Going up against the CX-30, I think you have a tough choice, let alone the rest of the crowd in this segment of the auto industry. Let me know which way you would go. Put it in the comment section. Are you going CX-30? Are you going Kia Seltos, Trailblazer? What are you doing? Let me know what you're doing. Put it in the comment section. Definitely bringing some, something to think about and some changes to the subcompact class with this Taos. But if you wanna keep seeing small size SUVs on Rady's Rides, leave that down in the comment section as well. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Rady's Rides family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you in the channel, click the first link, 
become a Radies Rise Patreon member. Click the second link, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the queen of the camera. She holds back the smiles, even with all my jokes. But definitely, I know you guys are all smiling at her great camera work. Show Lori some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for being the muscle behind the camera. And just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.